In the new version of the guidelines, ECG monitor has a fundamental role uh, because uh, the, a lot of new papers was published in the last five years on the use of ECG monitoring and syncope. And now we have the possibility to, uh, to have the ECG monitoring during the real life of the patients. So this is very important and there is an increasing role of ECG monitoring in the management of patients with syncope. And in particular, we have ECG monitoring in hospital for high-risk patients. We may have 24-hour alter or external loop recorder for patients with very frequent syncope, only with very frequent syncope. If you have not frequent syncope, but you have one or two syncope every year, or one syncope every two years, you need implantable loop recorder. Now we have implantable loop recorder, we can uh, uh, monitor in the patients for three years. And uh, we need a correlation between symptoms and arrhythmias directly from this. And uh, this is clearly illustrated. And if we use ILR in not a risk patients, we may have an early implantation of ILR at the beginning of the diagnostic protocol and we have uh, so much more diagnosis and we use a less number of tests. And uh, the other important point of these guidelines is that uh, uh, they enlarge the use of ILR also to other uh, conditions in differential diagnosis between PLOC and syncope and particularly uh, for patients with uh, resistant epilepsy or uncertain epilepsy and also for the older patients with unexplained falls, that we have so many patients with falls and uh, in 50% of the cases in unexplained falls is not fall but is syncope. And so this is a new point of these guidelines uh, of 2018. It is relevant also the classification of the arrhythmias that we can find in during the registration. During ECG monitoring, we may have different type of uh, arrhythmias, typical arrhythmias, or, an ex, uh, or an not clearly arrhythmias, but uh, arrhythmias due to reflex, due to vasovagal reflex. And this is clearly explained in the guidelines which type of arrhythmias are due to a reflex and which are due to the arrhythmias. And another point very important is to guide the therapy, to use ECG monitoring to decide in which patient we have to implant a pacemaker, particularly in patients with recurrent severe vasovagal syncope. Uh, that is a benign condition, but if you have two, three, four syncope every year, uh, your life is different. And so these are recurrent severe syncope. And if we find and prolonged asystole during a spontaneous episodes in the real life of the patient, we have a clear indication for pacemaker therapy.